the exact salary is unknown at this point. Um, so the, the budget number represents the existing salary. Um, and then the other thing too is inspectional services. As you all know, there's been some changes in the hours within that department, mm -hmm. um, it, which made it a little bit, I don't want to say challenging, but we're trying to best represent the changes in the budget, but also protecting ourselves in case for some reason the arrangement and the hours do need to change. So um, just be aware of that as well as you're going through. So yeah, could you explain explain what we agreed to before you were here? Sure. In the case of inspectional <laughs> services and, and where we are right now, Absolutely. as briefly as possible. So uh, Glenn retired. Glenn's our uh, building inspector um, for the town house. Has been in service here or service, servicing the town for um, decades, mm -hmm. um, and he has. Congratulations to him, he's retired officially. Um, and he was working both in Topsfield and Newberry. Mm -hmm. West Newberry. West Newberry, thank West you. Newberry, yeah. And he will no longer be working in West Newberry and has reduced his hours uh, for retirement purposes uh, below full time. Um, in a corresponding move, um, Diane, who served, is provides mm -hmm. service at the window downstairs, uh, she went from 24 hours to 32 hours um, to provide um, customer service during those times when Glenn might have otherwise been in the so, so that's that's the net of it. it was this 30 24 to 32 is the is the increase in those in her hours. She increased the Glenn's mm -hmm. decrease by going from 30 to 18. Yeah. So now in the case of Glenn, it went down enough to cover this cost. It's actually a, I think a net savings to the town. Yeah, because, he because, because, because West Newbury was paying some, and we no. were paying no. some. No, 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 no. Separate. We weren't totally oh, doing. Thank you. He, he was here for 30 hours, is what he got paid for. Totally separate from West Newbury. That was just a side that he worked on another job. He was paid for 30 hours. Now he's here in Topsfield. In Topsfield. Mm -hmm. Now he'll get paid for 18. It's a difference of about $25,000. What we did in the budget, however, because of the arrangement is it's a six-month review. He, he's talked about it in his part, too, that he doesn't know that he wants to do it right. in his retirement. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we chose to do is we funded it in full in as his line item, and we didn't make the change to the administrative assistant either. So if, if it doesn't work out, there's still money in the budget to hire a person. If it does work out, there'll be a savings of probably about 10000 in that account, 10, mm -hmm. 10 okay. to 12000 Mm -hmm. So being conservative yeah. and protecting us if yeah. it doesn't matter. I'm not sure I follow how we it's possibly it's, it's, Just bear with me for yeah. a second. Just, uh, this is back when I was. Sure. Glenn worked two days a week here, Tuesdays and Thursdays, from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. thereabouts. Let's say the whole day. So that's eight hours times two is 16. I, I never understood that he worked 30 hours here. What do we, that we worked, that he worked. Uh, that, that doesn't make sense. He was in the building for those hours. Supposedly those were office hours. He was, he was not in the building for those hours. He was in the building from 8 to 10 on Tuesday and 8 to 10 on Thursday. I mean, if all the numbers work out, fine. But it's just, it, I, I, I can't, maybe I should discuss it. Well, that was the question we posed to him. How is it that you can go from 30 to 12 with no impact to the town? Or 18? Yeah, yeah, and still um, do the same job. And still do the same this. job. Some, something is, OK. I'll, I'll talk offline on this. Maybe it's, yeah. you, can, you can educate me on it, because I, I can't do it on the back of an envelope, but I'll, I'll catch you. Thank you. I think his Thank response you. was that he's losing 12 hours, but she's gaining eight, and a lot of what they need is administrative and by the window as opposed to okay. come out in the field. The, the explanation and our understanding of what actually is going on is a conversation offline. Yeah. And Kevin, you yeah. 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 should follow up with Mr. Gant on that. Okay. Um, but I, I'm glad it's being reviewed in six months because that's not the motion. And so if, if that's his understanding, that's good because we want to make sure it is actually working out for the town. Yeah. Yes. And we did agree to that six-month review. Not in the motion. Not in the motion. No, no really. But that was removed. Mm -hmm. By the way, let me understand that too. Uh, I understand that somebody who's retired has uh, is able to come back and work roughly half the time, 960 hours. But there's no uh, requirement to, to not come back for a year or something. That's often the case in industry. Here, he, uh, it's, it's apparently, he's able to come back and start working right away. I don't as know, long as that, I kind of wondered the same thing. That would, um, 
it was just kind of caught in between, you know, Barbara and Jackie, and they haven't asked Jackie that. But that would be, that would be a concern. Would you just take a note down on that, so we don't get caught into something? Yes, did yeah. something wrong. If you divide 960 by 52, it comes to 18. And that's that's standard. Yeah, I mean, that's why the nine sixty is a given. You're wondering about the year, the year late, the year in between. This is the one thing that is is sometimes. Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't want to get caught doing something. Yep. That, that, that's, that's worth checking. Yeah. Um, so the last couple ones I'll just mention, highlight, um, or to help. Um, we budgeted for a couple of uh, services. Um, one of them is deceased animal pickup. It really is not a formal means, so we've gone through a process of at least identifying a way to handle those situations and putting dollars to it. Um, when we get to that line item, I can give you a lot more detail on it, but there's, um, it's just something to flag for you, as well as the flu vaccines, which historically have increased in, in participation, um, and as a result, the cost has gone up, and it's been absorbed by other line items within the budget, so we're trying to more accurately uh, project what that flu vaccine costs are. Is that necessary for a town to do? Um, my only other experience is yes, we did it as well. It's a it's a great service to the community, and it, it's uh, a den animal. I'm, no, no the flu. Flu. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> we've increased a lot. Of no, we've moved on to flu. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. We, we, my last experience as well, the animals pickups was something we budgeted for no, no, as well. No. I, I just asked flu, because I yes. know the, these free flu vaccines, they're covered by their insurance. They come in and they, you know, we charge their insurance as would any um, pharmacy. We do get reimbursed by and large on that. If somebody yeah, comes so in and they have no insurance and don't have a flu shot, I doubt very much that we turn them away. We totally don't. We, we cannot turn them away, no. whether they're from Topsfield or from someplace else. I mean, you could but on that, we You could recoup some of the costs, but if the money if money comes in from the state, it's going to go into the general fund. General budget, yeah. yeah. And Which it's, is why it's not coming from, from, yeah. from the state. From the, it's in the state, it's, it's coming from it's Medicare true. or from, from insurance companies Sometimes is what's coming in. Well. And we pay 10% to, for, for Worcester somewhere to do the billing for us, to do all the paperwork for us. Yes. And then that money comes into the town treasury. Yeah. That's how that works. But we're, so what's the, what's the real question? This is costing us more money, and before we had to absorb it in other line items. I so don't know why it's cost costing us going going money for this. My understanding is, talking with uh, Wendy, um, is that there's been an increase over the years of participation. That I, I, I made a note just to, to circle back with her and just get a, a little better clarity on the reimbursement component, because I'm, yeah. I'm not being a health person. I don't have that expertise. So if it really did cost us more, we're, we're getting, we're covered in the revenue because it's coming in not as, completely. quote, free, free cash. <laughs> Well, not, not completely. In the future, it's not completely? No, it's not. And, and part of the reason for the increase is that there's a central location for it now here, that the, the number of vaccines they gave almost doubled from what they had done previously. Okay, we ought to understand though, what it is. <clears throat> the other thing, too, is the flu season started early this year. It was all over the news, and I think many people started thinking, oh, and then suddenly they see the announcement and will tend to come. If flu season comes late, some folks say, well, I haven't gotten it yet, and you get fewer folks, so Do just the vagaries of the... Captain, how many people come day. in without insurance to us? I don't have that information. I can ask Wendy for it, though, if she has that information, she should she... Because health insurance does cover it everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. So whether it, we they come to us... If you come with health insurance, yeah, exactly. Right, that's why I'm wondering how many come in without any insurance. Yeah, we'll make sure. I, I'll certainly follow up with her on some of those more specific questions around that. When we get to the work session, again, we're not trying... I appreciate the questions <gasps> great today, but the um, when we get to Board of Health, it's one of the it's one of the work sessions, that's when be very important to kind of have that backup mm -hmm. information Absolutely. so we kind of know where we're at. Yeah, so it's and good to raise it now because it gives you some yeah, time it's to it's do the no, it's great. It's, it's, it's great. So I understand it's an issue. We don't have an answer. It's yeah. fine, too. Yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll certainly get the backup for it. I know, and, and Wendy's been very thorough with her with her budget when I've gone through it with her. So that's I great. She's got some actuals we can look at. Yep, that's mm -hmm. good. Um, 
Last uh, two items I'm going to mention. Last first of the two is on the fire department side, um, and we have a special guest here today. <laughs> Chief, thank you for joining us. This, this didn't happen by accident, then apparently. No, it did though because I'm so I'm so embarrassed. I sent you guys an email at work late last night, early this morning, and it got stuck in my outbox. So then I looked at it and started with it. So then I came to the meeting to get it. So <laughs> there I am. We've been huddled around a computer the last couple of days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so there is, there is um, within the budget, it represents um, an increase to provide 24-7 uh, coverage uh, from a fire standpoint. Um, life safety, it's, it's incredibly important um, to have the resources available. Um, being a top field where the ambulance service is located uh, relative to us, and the time it takes to get to, to Beverly, for example, is the nearest hospital. Um, it can be life or death situation. So um, the chief's put some, some information together um, that we'll get into more detail, obviously, um, around what that model will look like. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's an important one that we should spend some real time on because um, it, it's important for the community. It's important that we, we, we're comfortable with what we're looking at as well. Chief, do you want to mention anything? No, I just, um, we're, it's just finishing up the model that we started last year. So it's the Sunday through Thursday night from midnight to 6 a.m. And I just put in for two call firefighters during that time. So that way we'd be, then the task becomes then getting people to actually fill those shifts. So it's helped out tremendously the time that we've had this year um, where we've had people in the station. Mm -hmm. We've had real, um, real um, positive outcomes because of that. And I, we have had over 20 times in this fiscal year already where no one from the fire department or only one person has responded to incidences in Topsail during that midnight to 6 a.m. time. So, uh, and that one person is me, and that another chief is not going to do that. So we have to set it up. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's the same thing that we've said for years, that it, you can't run a 24-hour 7 service with people not there. So it's just to finish up that, those five nights um, from midnight to 6 a.m. <coughs> is that for so. fire or for uh, medical? Both. Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. It's hard to, you, it's for all hazards, it's for everything. It's really hard to do victory, budget-wise, it is. Yeah. It is. Yep. It is. But um, but it's for it, it's for who who knows what. It's mm -hmm. for you know carbon monoxide. You never know what's coming. No, yeah, you don't, yeah. and you can't expect the police officers can't be doing it. They can't do. They don't have the equipment to do carbon monoxide calls, fire calls, and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah. So to be your responsibility, obviously, to have um, one of those call firefighters if you were to do that. Um, EMT certified, or are all call firefighters? They all are. Yeah. All are. They okay. Are. Yeah. So that there would be that first level of uh, medical attention and oh, yeah. obviously calls yeah. for other things if necessary. Yeah. But, yeah, usually the way I have it right now, one shift, um, they're both required to be EMTs, but also one of the people is required to be a, an operator of the of a engine so that you also have a pump operator. So you have the, if a, necessary. You have the ability to either go with the ambulance or the fire truck, whichever one you need. So. Perfect. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a, a for it. You know, $65,000, that's a good, uh... First responders, since I've been on the job, there's been a, a few incidences where they've had to respond um, heroically, and they've, they've, they've grown to the challenge. Just, we're very fortunate to have a team we have here at Topsfield. The other thing it sounds like to me, um, Jen, is that um, we've been sort of inching up for years and years and years. Yeah, it's a national this is trend. This is kind of the last inch. Not in terms of depth, but in terms of coverage. Right, it's a baseline, and then it's a baseline, um, but it covers twenty four seven. Right, and it is a, a remarkable milestone to get to. Yeah. we're decades behind, but it's a national trend. You know, like I said, my challenge then is to find people to sh to man those shifts. Right, because that's that's really hard. But you'd like and that um, challenge compared to not having the twenty four seven. I would absolutely would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Is that's in helpful. the budget, Jen, um, whatever that approach is that you're going to try to. Entice people to take those those shifts. Uh, is that all incorporated into whatever? Um, to some degree, yes. But the real work comes to from you guys to negotiate um, the contracts because the um, there's it's kind of the kind of the activities has shifted in the fire department and it's almost like a different it's it's not a different classification but they're they're not necessarily call firefighters because they can't come on calls because they don't live very close but more like a per diem or something like that and maybe if there were minimum standards of shift coverage and stuff like that that would be a, i would hope that there'd be support from um, the board of selectmen and negotiations because those contracts are open 
And um, I think that people would be favorable to that too. So, but it, that definitely is um, that. That's why the increase in the budget. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll cover for today um, is I, one thing I've I've heard a lot about is the economic development um, downtown and other other places. Um, it seems to be a real um, well great leadership behind it and a vision as well. Um, and I've heard a few times people mentioning the idea of potentially a part-time planner, either mm -hmm. uh, a third or half or something like that. Um, that planner position is not included in this budget for the reasons we talked about earlier. Um, for me personally, it's a little too soon to assume those types of costs. Mm -hmm. um, I, would, I'd, I'd certainly want to have a better understanding of, of really what that looks like. But I bring it up today because we'll be presenting the formal budget on Monday. And I'm curious what you folks think about a part-time planner. And it's very preliminary. If there's an interest at all in that idea, what I would do is I'd do a little more due diligence, um, sort of pursue what a job description would look like, where the needs would go, where the time would be spent, and then present that back to you as well. But just, I want to just kind of get a sense for you folks, uh, the conversation, you know the community as well as anybody, uh, if there's, if there, what, you, what your thoughts are on that. Well, I defer to the expert here, uh, the two experts that are here that have been involved in that, and I've read the uh, MAPC proposal, which I thought was a beautiful document. I mean, it's really impressive stuff. And they talk about the need for a planner. So uh, I will shut up at this point and I'm let you guys tell me whether or not you... Uh, well, I definitely think a person is needed. Now, whether it's a, a person who comes on and, and is an employee or whether it's contracted um, or whether we get someone in conjunction with another town because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure we need to go full time at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think we, if you looked at that plan and the number of things that are laid out there, that's not something that someone in the town hall currently could assume as a responsibility. That, is, we, a, that is a complicated plan and I'm telling you it is beautiful. There are a number of piece thought. parts and yeah. as much as I know Kevin you're going to be involved, you've got so many other areas that you're driving mm -hmm. forward. I, I just don't think time wise that you could assume that um, responsibility. So I, I would recommend that we do pursue it. Yeah, I, I agree very much with, with Lynn on that. And there's so many other things um, I know talking with Martha Morrison. Um, someone to help us work on housing policy and so on. We have the Zoning Board of Appeals and so on. And there's not a home for that. And we need to have a home for it. Um, uh, one of the most common complaints people have about you know, developers and economic development is um, so where do you start? It's just like um, you know a uh, Gordian's knot. Where do you pull to make something happen? And if I'm going to give you just a, this is an illustrative, illustrative example, not a specific idea necessarily, but if somebody was going to put in a new restaurant or do a business or something, like that, there's one office they could stop in. They could give their plumbing permit if it was filled out properly. They could give all their applications. One place where they had the opportunity for one-stop shopping as part of their responsibilities, plus housing policy, plus I think we need a long list on that. My guess is this year is not enough time to really think through how we would justify that as much, let alone the possibility of hiring. But um, I very much like the idea of taking, I think you expressed it very well, taking a long, hard look, seeing what a job description might be, really talking about among ourselves. Um, the experience of most towns who have them, and by the way, most towns around us do, um, is that the economic development that ensues more than covers the cost of the salary, although it doesn't feed back, the grants don't feed back into the salary pot, they feed back into other places, mm -hmm. in projects and so on, mm -hmm. that represent benefits but don't have to be funded by other parts of the budget and so on. So my expectation is that grant writing would be a key part of that individual's responsibility and that I would frankly kind of expect that they would basically pay for their cost to us um, indirectly but through grants and so on we could benefit from. But I think it's definitely worth looking into. Yeah, and I would say I know it seems like it's early and we don't have all the ducks in a row. We do have a plan. We do have the momentum. Mm -hmm. We have the support of the town for implementing what was put into that plan. And I think there are some um, vehicles, some funding sources that we can talk about 
uh, to make that happen. Um, I don't think it would be a large expenditure on the part of the town or that would have to go into the budget mm -hmm. for this, but I think that role is key. Yep. I mean, if we do nothing at this point after putting together the plan, and then there's nobody to help move this forward or make some of these things happen, and some of them are definitely doable within a year, um, or to start laying the groundwork, as you had said, with the grants, um, mm -hmm. so that we have that money come six or nine months out. Um, I think the town's going to be very disappointed in that the momentum and the support from the businesses that we've gotten is going to stall. Are you suggesting we move forward with it? Part-time planner or not an employee? Oh. No, I, I think contracted services and we have some options and we have some funding. So I think possibly a limited time. level of contract. I'm, I'm going to toss a number out here, but because it's so much less than we pay a third-time person, but even ten thousand dollars possibly for contracted services when we might need them. For instance, if frankly we could pay that to a grant writer and get that back in spades mm. if there were things we wanted to do. The only difference is that. The kinds of things you get grants for are usually not things that you put in a budget. Mm -hmm. They're benefits that pay back. As you know, in this case, I don't think we would have, as a capital item or as a operate, would we're operating as a capital item. I don't think we would have voted to do the strategic plan, but they dropped it on us, <laughs> and we're benefiting from it. And those are the kinds of things that we hope are going to drive the town forward. And frankly, I'd like to create enough more economic activity in the town that it becomes very clear the town has benefited in between meals taxes, increase in the value of businesses, more businesses here, um, that we uh, see a noticeable increase. It would be nice if we went from 7% to 10% even of our tax bill paid by the businesses. And, and just to um, add on to the, the, the state dropping those grants in our lap it was the result of many months of work on our part that didn't just come about. There's a lot of grant writing going on here. <laughs> <You know. laughs> um, and, and we just can't keep that up. Yeah, we right. can't expect the board to continue to yeah, do yeah. that level of work. Um, but that, that took months point. of work to get those two grants to come in. So this doesn't happen by itself. Uh, one other comment. I, I, you've I think you specifically, Kevin, and, Ka and Catherine, you as well, you've heard some issues today that we have some long-term ideas about things we'd like to do and things we'd like to fix. Okay? Uh, seems to me that you, uh, being uh, here for a whole month already, uh, seems to me you got a pretty full plate already, and I think you uh, need to be careful about, we need to be careful about I just keep pushing more and more on him. Let, let, let's get through this stuff. Let's get through the budget process. Then we can start talking about the long-range ideas about things we'd like to do. Uh, are, are you saying, Boyd, your thought was not to pursue a plan? or? I, I think at this point in time, no. I agree with what, what you ought to do. Let's take a look at that plan that the MAPC gave us and see what we can do on our own, uh, uh, taking yeah. advantage of you again <laughs> yeah you know it, that's not doable to expect us to drive oh, that I, and to I implement that. there are probably 18 mm -hmm. things on that list to do in the first year in no um, question so, so there's a lot of them one of the things that might be helpful um again i would like to see personally i would like to see a little bit of money put in that could be used and establishes the fact that investing in economic development is important. Um, there is going to continue to be far more value invested in the form of volunteer labor ideas and help than in what we pay for. I personally would like to see a line item, modest as it might be, even if it's only $5,000, that we could think about using, and frankly, between now and um, would be sort of, well, the selectman's office comes near the beginning there, but mm -hmm. um, have to talk about and make a decision. Um, to me, that's a worthwhile thing. My talks with John Guido um, some time ago when I mentioned that there seemed to be some momentum among people who were already engaged in development thinking and mm -hmm. development activities that we would need a planner, recognizing that the town isn't there yet. Um, but mm -hmm. there's maybe a few people a little more there after we have the thing upstairs. But um, I think sort of, if you will, putting it on the radar. 
and giving a little bit of advantage and so on. Um, and it might also um, help provide some support in terms of uh, if the process. I'd like to see for FY21 our ability to at least initiate the process of really looking and maybe engaging something, even if it's very part time. Think of like Glenn, for instance. What if you I think Glenn is perfect and, and there two is hours some a week, outside but financing. That we can tap into. We, we can match it. And that's pretty much the same approach that we use to hire facilities guys. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we said, let's put a line item there and put a few dollars if, there. If we put money in there, the state will look upon that very mm. favorably and is much more likely to match it for us. And that maybe the thought of a position, whether it's contract, you mentioned three alternatives, might be an FY22, but I think we've got to an FY21 start the process. Um, and I think it shows mm. commitment on our mm. part. There are a number of people who are willing to work with us in town, but if they don't see any commitment yeah. on our side, yeah. that there's going to be some dedicated resources to help move this forward, I think we're going to lose um, yeah. that support. I, I personally would like to see 10000 if it would be acceptable. That is, in the overall town budget, very small. Um, worst we could do is not find things we need it for for FY21, mm -hmm. in which case we could both carry it over. Um, but I think having that flexibility, there might be some project that comes along where we wanted to hire a planner. You know, somebody comes into town and says, I'm committed to building a restaurant here. I need to know where and how. Um, we have, nobody could do that now. And that might be something we pay a bit of a contract fee to have happen. And, and we're looking you know, at an experienced person. You know, yeah, we would this, be looking to bring in someone who's done this before so they can hit the ground running. <coughs> we tried to assume that in the town. People who are doing other jobs that don't have any understanding yeah, we already of know this. at least one person who is very experienced. He did the job in, in Ipswich. Are there He's any... He's retired and interested. Uh, who's that? Gibbs? Glenn. Yes, Glenn Gibbs. Um, are there any part-time planners around that you know of? Well, that would be about? somewhat... Not till this is all taken care of. Yeah. So, But yeah. starting... Um, you know, in June or whatever, yeah. and you, it, Kevin, you have to triage all these long list of things we're saying. But at some point, um, I think it would be to start reaching out when you talk. So I say, by the way, we're looking for plans. See what else other people are doing, and so on. Um, I don't know whether Georgetown, Raleigh, places like that have planners, but there may be. I would guess there are other um, town governments that are thinking about if they don't already have some kind of planning help, and that might be something where we could work out an arrangement that was collaborative and would save us money and help us ramp up. But I'll tell you, even a third time person properly used would be vast help in getting going. You know, my experience um, in Beverly and what we've, we were able to accomplish there, um, and what was happening before our time, um, there's, there's so much great momentum here that's similar, and there's so much potential in Topsfield that I, that I can see. Uh, and it feels to me that the community is seeing that as well. And, you know, as you said earlier, uh, Vice Chair, there's, um, there's some momentum happening right now. So putting some funds in here, I think, is a great idea. It, it's, it's a step forward to show people we're taking it serious. And it'll hopefully, it's the same way I, I got excited when I came to Topsfield. Somebody's going to look at it, especially a planner, and they're going to say, wow, you know, I can, I can make my mark here in Topsfield. We can do something great for the downtown. And downtowns and communities are so essential to their success. Um, it's 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 vital to a, to a town, and I think the fact that you all uh, recognize that uh, is really really great. So I'll uh, I'll make sure we incorporate that for Monday's budget, and then we can have a discussion on if that number, whatever at ten, or if it makes sense to go one way or the other, and what that looks like. Well, I think what we do is we put it and present it, much as you know, for Mondays presentation, I think a lot of it for the public good and it being, this will be available on Facebook perhaps, but they'll also be for folks who look at it on the website. Um, I think when we do our January 9th um, uh, working session mm -hmm. and we get to the selectmen's budget, that's when I think we take the next step in sort of thinking how much, how do we want to frame it, things like that. But and I'll do as much due diligence as I can. Just get some feelers about what a, a third time, half time, what that what the demographic was like, what interest might be out there um, for the down the road, but also for did, uh, did, did Gibbs retire? He is retired um, because he is, he worked very closely um, for years with um, Tim Collins because of the the sure. EBSCO project mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. He's on very good relations with with Tim, and um, 
is interested in helping Topps Field. Um, he doesn't want a full-time job by any stretch, but it's something that um, we already have a, an agreement that he's interested in helping and that there might be a way to use him. I can't say what that would be from a town paying point of view. Yeah, this point. Um, but it's worth considering because he's already indicated an interest in potentially you know, helping us does out. Does he live in Ipswich? He does. Yeah. He still lives there? Yeah, he still does. And he knows everybody. <coughs> and um, he's an idiosyncratic individual, but he's talented and has a successful record. And the new nonprofit has um, potentially agreed to help pay the services. So yeah. we would have financial support, but I, I think we need to show the town is just as serious. Mm, that's so it sounds to me like you've got some money in your pocket that you weren't telling us about. No, that's why I said that we had the alternative <laughs> sources. <laughs> um, one, last, <laughs> one last thought on the economic development front. Um, it is very exciting to me. I'm, I'm going to, as I've said to all of you, I'm, like, I want to make you all proud. Um, and I'm going to make sure I do best by the time I possibly can, but I will do whatever it takes whatever I can to help push that ball forward when it comes to the economic development side, you, you know, outside the regular hours, whatever it is, I, you know, whatever I can do to help that, because I think it's really important. You know? I'm sure you will, and I'm uh, <laughs> impressed with your enthusiasm, but like I said. <laughs> <laughs> My wife appreciates it more than anyone would. <laughs> this is number one for the time. <laughs> part of all of the funding now that we are interested in doing it this year, I would suggest that we do perhaps what we've done with the facilities last year, mm -hmm. and that is essentially put it as a board article that we uh, would put in. That gets buy-in from the people. Yeah. Budget is a buy-in, but it's like buried. And you make it a warrant article, and it's a very clear thing that people. Maybe first year for and it gives us a chance to talk about it. Yeah, and it gives us a chance to talk about it at town meeting. Yeah, that's right. And then that, that. that shows yeah. a strong buy in. Yeah. I, I yeah. also love that because it's a great marketing approach, too, to let the town know. Yeah, um, it's a good idea. The, the they're commitment they're buying that's on our reason, and they're yeah. buying yeah. into it and right. things like that. Yeah, but I think, I think that's an excellent The second thought is that we really should, though, look at our. Organization chart. I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about organization chart. And the organization chart we have includes a community development purchasing agent, purchasing coordinator, whatever. So, um, about a decade or maybe a little bit more ago, we had a land use coordinator, mm -hmm. and then that changed into a community development coordinator. So, we have a title within the town, it's part time and it was, and it justified the person that got that job, because it wasn't a full-time job of purchasing or whatever else. So we should be cognizant of what our organization chart is and what we're planning to do with that and how we might work whatever we're talking about here into that or explain why that's one thing and this is something yeah. else and whatever else. Mm -hmm. and People will remember these things. I certainly do. Yeah, see. Uh, so we, we need to understand that. And that's just a, yeah. just a consideration then. Planity. But, uh, planity. Um, Community, I think planning comes under community development, and if there's already kind of an umbrella that's been opened once, it might help, as you say, Dick, sort of say, we're easing into the time, we're coming into the time when we need to think about actually fulfilling that before. I like the fact we build on the past. Okay. That's always good. So uh, I'll put some more information together around yep. what that might look like, and I'll include. Good. Uh, that's great. Uh, good. Um, so that's that's it for sort of highlights I was going to cover today um, okay. on the operating side. Do you have any questions for the operating side at this point? I know you will soon. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I would like no, to. We, we'll have a lot of them Monday yeah. probably. Sure. The, the goal of this was to get this into the hands, our hands, mm -hmm. um, the formal presentation, which will cover some of the same information for the benefit of the public, um, will be made on uh, Monday, and that's when we get the official non-draft mm -hmm. version as of that time. Um, and then uh, we will, and I'll make a point of making clear that we have public sessions for the next three Thursdays mm -hmm. when we will be discussing sections of the budget. And people can come, it's their time to find out and learn as we learn. And if we have issues and questions and changes we feel are necessary, um, we will go, that's when we do the detailed line-by-line -line discussion. Monday will not be the time for that. That's right. um, but the idea of putting three work sessions for that is twofold. One, we want to be sure we have plenty of time. 
Um, and the second thing is, um, I'm particularly concerned during work sessions because Dick, you're not going to be here um, in town, physically in town. Right. When are you leaving, by the way? Sunday, I mean, the 26th. Okay. Yeah, and so I, I feel strongly that. Five days. Uh -oh. I feel strongly that um, uh, our full board of four should be here, um, physically present. Um, the other thing, too, knowing Island Telephone Services, since you'll be on an island, um, you drop the call once and legally you can't pick it up again. So, I mean, legally in terms of the rules that would allow us to do a remote participation. Once they're off, they're off. And so if something happened, we dropped the call, then we've lost the benefit of yeah, having I'll do it as long as I can, and if we drop it, then... Yeah. So, okay, we'll so what are we that. saying? What are we changing for meetings then? Are we saying Ninth, we're not... 16th, and 21st, is it? We're talking about Thursdays. We're, we're talking about the next, the, the next three Thursdays. The next three Thursdays, I think. Um, well, you were just talking about the 27th, so we'll jump to that in a that's second. That's a regular meeting. That's a regular meeting yeah. that you're not going to be here for? He is not going to be here. Okay. On the 9th, I can't be here until 3.30. I okay. have so a meeting until 3.30. I can live with that. Yeah, I can um, live with that. So yes. does that work we'll change for everybody? Yeah. As as I'm, I'm okay to change just, that to Could you just start at 3.30? Yeah, of course. The question I have is on the 16th, you had requested to have the planning board, ZBA, talking about the downtown. How and long that will that be? Well, I'm asking you, and we have no idea. Um, I think what we, here's what that's about um, in talking with Martha um, and others. Um, they have a number of ideas that um, could go on the warrant this year. Um, one is the idea of protecting the common by creating the Topsfield Common District. Uh, protecting it in terms of its aesthetic and its inclusion in the historic zone and all this kind of stuff so that the appearance doesn't change um, in ways that people I'm sure would be very unhappy about but also protects it in terms of there are buildings around the common that um, need to be maintained um, and uh, goes everything from the church that is trying to do you know trying to get some money to do their maintaining mm -hmm. Um, Frank Martino seems to be doing fine with the commons, um, but uh, you know he'd like to do better and maybe do more things. Um, there's you know two privately owned homes, the mm -hmm. Rolsmans and the Lopez home, and so on, which might benefit from the ability to entertain additional uses, but very limited uses, such as guest house, possibly certain offices, possibly restaurants, all within the existing. You know, footprint and so on. So we're not talking about ex extensions, changes, or new buildings um, without requiring anybody to make any changes at all. So, on that basis, um, I thought it was worth us hearing from the um, uh, planning board on that. There also have been, they have been talking, not with us directly, but that's what I wanted to hear. Um, it turns out, I believe, that the DPW yard is not currently in the business village district and they want to share with us their thinking about whether we might want to do that because it would allow certain uses there that currently would not be allowed. And so it's to present the idea. We can make a decision if we want to whether any of these are worth including in the warrant, but the goal is to just get in touch with what they're thinking about. So they're going to talk, I believe, solely about potential zoning changes that might be of value to the town. Would they be talking about, I know that Martha's been talking about the expanding the business history to include the commons and well, those you know, two we, private homes. And we talked home. about that, but the problem, if you include, if you expand the business village up there, there's no reason you couldn't put a hair salon in the Lopez house. And the general feeling is that's not what we're looking for. That if we made a separate Topsfield Common District, that they could be a far more restricted and set they of would, And they would be included in that common, top sealed common district. They common. would, yeah, would be, basically, okay. and again, they will tell us what they think, but the, the conversation we've had so far is all the properties adjacent to North Common, East mm -hmm. Common, and uh, Main Street um, would be uh, included in that, but no further. Yeah. But it would just be enough to protect the views that we see mm -hmm. so that because um, right now we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, and um, many of those places, um, if they were to go on the market, they can only be sold to single-family homes, and it's, uh, we know in a couple cases that the cost of um, renovation 
would make that a prohibitive cost for someone. And we don't want to see it just fall down and then something, you know, circa 2,000 architecture get put up in its place because it can't afford anything else. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to sort of save what's there and give it more capability to be maintained by the owners without changing the physical. And I might say, in terms of the prospect of including a restaurant and maybe in the guest house um, as permitted uses in that area, all TBD, um, provide services to the town citizens because some people have family who come and would like to stay in town. And certainly, um, many people have said, well, I've got a nice restaurant in. My feeling is a, uh, what I call a twinkly light restaurant of modest size somewhere up on the common <laughs> would be, in my view, an excellent start on our minimum two restaurants downtown that I think the town deserves to have and would help spark the economic vitality of downtown because there's some great ideas I won't go into, them, but Kevin and I have been talking about this and he's already opened my mind to a couple of fairly simple things that could change everybody's feeling about downtown when you start making that happen. And I think this is potentially a way with, I don't see what the risk is to anyone, but. Has Martha and the planning board seen your uh, MAPC proposal? Oh, we had discussed it with them. Yes. Because okay. there's a lot of stuff in there oh, yeah. that are going to involve the planning board. Oh, yes. Could I come back to, you went through increases from your list. Everything that you talked about uh, increases is not in this, correct? It's not representative. In um, this budget. It's mentioned uh, on the far right column. As comments, As but comments. not in dollars. There's nothing nothing in here. The other things that you said are increases, they're not in here yet. Correct. Just to clarify. Yep, they're low, but you'll notice that every other category is 0%, which meets the FinCom's mm -hmm. uh, budget guidelines. Right. And so the additionals are outside. <coughs> All of this is still to be discussed. Absolutely. Let's try to get yep. it in. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's so cool. um, Just one last, couple last things budget related I just want to mention too. Um, yeah, talked to the chair possibly doing um, uh, a budget open house uh, hosted here towards the end of this month, maybe early February. Um, or anyone from the public that might have any questions as we're going through this process. Basic like a or question technical. and answer. Just so don't, yeah, I'll just I'll be available. Walk people through what what's in the budget. Some would like to discuss it, answer questions, go over a little bit of what's within it. Sort of like what we're doing today, um, just so people in the community have an understanding of, of you know what's behind it. Because again, you can look at the ink and you can look at what's on there, but there's always a story behind the line of what, what's what's there. And the more opportunity I have and the team have to sort of talk through that with the public, the better. So. We don't have anything scheduled yet, but it's a tentative, um, tentative uh, and I'm calling it open house. It might be a better term for it. It might be branded differently, but it's just an opportunity for people to come in. And, uh, and I always appreciate, I appreciate a chance to talk um, to the public about what we work on. And Kevin, one of the things I had suggested to you is considering the idea of having two sessions. One would focus just on the Article 3, this budget, which is a big, big piece, mm -hmm. just on the operating pieces, mm -hmm. and another one on capital, because what happens, uh, we've had um, Steve Whalen, the moderator, has held some forms. We're starting to get better at that, but what tends to happen is we tend to kind of march through this long list, and because this comes at the very beginning, mm -hmm. there's kind of a sense that in the two and a half hours or whatever we set aside, it's not time to get into this in more detail. I think if there was a meeting to allow people to ask questions about this in particular, provide some summaries of where things could go, and so on and so forth, it will help people in, for those who come to something like that, see that this is one piece of our thinking. Capital we kind of treat differently, but we have to look at as living in the same house as this. So um, I'm not trying to put you on the spot by putting that out right now, but I think two I think would be great. Yeah. No, I, I think, think two would be good. And making really clear that there are two pieces mm -hmm. um, would be very Early useful. on, so that inputs can Early be on. Yeah. effective yeah. in some way if there's a yeah. request, and it's a process. It's yeah, excellent. Absolutely. So we change the process a little bit, but it's good change. Well, that's a good change, and how we do that, when we do that, and definitely including those kinds of things, um, I will expect to see when next year, next fiscal year, um, when you after all this, you have time to sort of think about what's going to be the budget calendar yep. going mm -hmm. forward. Because the earlier we do that, the more the public can see it while it's in its formative stages, um, right. the better. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. So we're trying to evolve into a, um, a less frenetic, more open and transparent.
process for everybody. Which is great. That's something we started to talk about a year ago, which is improving our communication. Yep. Excellent. With the community. And this is a great step. Yep. And I know it's public meetings, so I'll say it too. It's always an open door policy in our mm -hmm. office. So if anyone outside of these budget open houses, if you still have a question, the door's open. Come by. Yep. Just for you, we have these listening sessions. Right now, they're yes. only once a month. As a matter of fact, in the now is one. So that's also available to people as far as communications we try to make it go. You, you might be into it again. I'm not trying to put more on your plate, but you're somebody whose plate always seems to have a corner to slide another meatball on. Here's another meatball. Um, join Dick at one of his sessions. He's ended up kind of taking them. I did one or two, but Dick's been taking them on a lot more. But um, that might be an opportunity to go. Sometimes it's one or two people show up. Sometimes it's half a dozen. Yeah, if you have um, them, Great. And it's really kind of interesting because it's folks like David and others who are kind of following this, not always as openly as you are, who come and want to talk in a smaller place and really want the back and forth. And you do meet people, and um, it's kind of interesting. You couldn't go all the time. Some, sometimes it's the tree out in front of my house is rotting. What are you, how are you going to fix oh, it? Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it's the kind of thing also the couple line people may have come if they thought about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just, it's an opportunity sure. for people to come and ask questions. So can, can I just talk about the calendar from there? Yeah. Uh, we talked on the board. Uh, as I remember it, the kind of the calendar, and you work very hard on the calendar, I understand. The calendar talks about closing, opening the ward, I think, on Monday, perhaps, and closing it uh, a few weeks later. The 20th. Uh, it, oh, it is the 27th? 6th and 27th. It's on the calendar currently. Yeah. Um, I can't understand why we don't keep it open until the end of February. I mean, we're putting, I don't see that we're going to have everything together by the end of, by the 27th, reasonably. Um, and it certainly gives us time to create the warrant as far as uh, being able to publish it March, through, throughout essentially the month of March. Um, so uh, I, I'd open that up for discussion as to uh, when we really, really want to close that war. Is there a legal reason we've had to do it so early? No. I have the same thought, Dick. I mean, even yeah. if we went to the middle None. of February, um, I, I agree. I sort of have wondered if it's a little, I mean, because <clears throat> there may still be some, you know, a little bit of fussing around on things on this. And I, given the fact we're trying to expand our engagement with the budget process in your first year here, um, having the time necessary to really talk about this, um, I think is important, and I would definitely support Dick's idea. Can I suggest that we, we think about it and let's talk about it at Monday's meeting. Monday's meeting. Monday's meeting. One of the items is not to for Monday's meeting. Um, Captain, was there rationale or thinking behind it's, why you did really close control the, the citizen petitions? Because you, you got to get your hands around them right away, knowing what's coming in on those. And that was that was the reason why. Okay. I would I would think that that would be the only. Yes. If you want to try to limit the number of citizens petition that could be an issue. It's not necessarily even limiting. It's well, just, just, you're just gonna, you're, you're tossing yeah. balls up in the air and you just gotta know which ones are, you know, what, what's out there. Yeah. So, but I mean, like a department head, if something came down, you know, like a mass law was changing and had to put one on the warrant, it could still go on the warrant, but it's just, uh, it's just to know what's coming in with yeah. citizen petitions. If you push everything to the last minute, it just it gets very yeah. difficult to manage. Does the 27th date pose a hardship for anyone? I, I think if you wanted to extend it, make it a full month, or so, you know, it would, these dates were based on last year's, um, you know, just t you know fixing it into the calendar. I think if you wanted to extend it, I'd extend it a week into February. What is it right now? It's I think it's. So why don't you make a recommendation to us on Monday, Chairman, based upon talking with everybody else and the and Dick's idea? I think yeah. extending it right. at least a week would be a tremendous thing. Okay. Also, you'd be here. Oh, yeah. Close it. <laughs> yeah, I think if you held it open until the end of February, you could find yourself scrambling at the end. Yeah, yeah which so is, we've been, been working be... backwards from right. scrambling to trying to tighten yeah, it and make yeah. sure everybody does their legwork up front so that we're not racing at the end. Yes. So we have to also be cognizant of not going back into the trap that we had before. Yes. And I'll certainly, it, I'll make a recommendation, first time ever doing a warrant, to be fair and honest, but I'll do my best to find out from some of my colleagues. Well, I'm, I'm just going to come in. We had a, Give him, cut him a little slack because he's never done this before. Whatever it takes, we'll get it done. I just, like I said, I just don't know time wise how much time really is. Here's the issue if you cut it on the 27th, then you got an absolute one, that's it, these are the things. And then every time you add it, you keep moving things and moving things. And the thing card goes a little bit crazy because the numbers are already established. We put other numbers in and move it around. 
Not to say that it wouldn't change later on, but it just seems like, it's gracious, January, the end of January is just so, yep. we have I'm, so much work to do. It's, it's, so I think it's worth it to get a feedback. Sure. I'm, I'm also looking at the fact we have a um, board of selectmen meeting scheduled for the 27th, and we have one scheduled for the 3rd. My question is, uh, we do not have one scheduled for the 10th, and we don't have one scheduled for the 17th, President's Day. My question is, should we consider moving the one from the 3rd to the 10th and making that the close of warrant? Good. Sounds good to me. You, you do it. You, according to the schedule, you have a meeting on the 10th. I don't think it's a meeting. You don't have a meeting. Yeah, typically, like, don't do back support. to that. It's what? We typically don't do back to that. I realize we don't, and that's why I'm saying that. It's actually on the schedule for now. We do have the 10th. Yeah, it's already on the 10th. Oh, we do have the tents? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good Lord, we get that. Okay. Debbie, I need to get a copy of Currently, okay, so maybe I just haven't put it in. I, I blew that. But if we have one on the 10th, regardless of whatever else, um, my sense is that that represents um, a two-week push-out um, that mm -hmm. is meaningful. Um, and uh, I'm afraid a one-week won't be a whole lot. And, but I just, what I would appreciate, Kevin, is your recommendation after you talk with other people who Absolutely. are managing the process, um, and that maybe we consider doing it two week and certainly make. Just keep in mind that the rest of what's happening with the rest of the schedule, though, because you're already the, the draft warrants put in place. That's when you receive that on the tenth. So it closes on the 29th. On the tenth, you have the draft warrant, which is going to include all these things. So I just. And you need so and that pull blows yeah, all together. And then, and then and that's why I lot within yeah. within fifteen days after that. I think I just would caution about really opening that too so far up. This is what I would like is to have you work out what's the rational way to do this, recognizing that the sense of the board is we would like to extend the closing of the warrant if we can, even if it is one week, even if we have to have back to back board selectman meetings with short agendas to take care of this stuff. The value of having the extra time, I think, is justified. Well, we can close it at any time. When we, when we go ahead and open the bar, we specify we're opening it and it will close on a certain date. We don't have to have a meeting on the date. You can close it at any point. You can say it's closed on that particular date. So we don't have to vote on it? Mm -hmm. Well, we voted on it when we I voted on it. When you we, open. So we, we open it for this period, you can today open. Until, or from tomorrow until whatever. So it's up to us in one motion. So there we go. We that, that's that's a great point, Dick. So maybe we could pick a date when we're not meeting. Yeah, then I would, sure. you know, I would throw out, is there a problem that we're, we're solving by extending this? this? The calendar, a lot of thought went into it to have it yeah, set up the way it is. What potentially right doing is we're hearing about a number of things that are going to be on the warrant items and whatever that. I think we've got some questions about the capital. In my mind, we still have, we had presentation in part, possibly by Robin, but I think we still have a lot of work to do in looking at the capital. And each of those capitals are warrant articles, whatever. So it, the idea was to give us a, a little bit more time I to know. try to get it done well. I, I, I totally of understand. To rush into it. I, I think we've made a motion towards that. We've got six meetings in January, six opportunities to take a look at the information that's coming in. We're meeting an awful lot in January. So this, I just don't want to throw off yeah. your whole schedule and get us back into kind of frantically, if people think they have a little more time, then they take it up. It, it's used it's up. more for citizen petitions, to, you know, just to be able to manage what's coming and manage the information. You know, we're looking at from the from the seventh to the 29th, That's over twenty days. That's more days than the department has had to do their own budgets. Okay. Come up with a recommendation yeah. based so, upon reality uh, and so on. The other and, thing and is don't, don't cut it too. Sh don't extend it too much. No, I you know, maybe wait is really all we need. If you think if you think it's that. an issue, then. We don't need to I, appreciate there. That. I think yeah. it sounds like a good idea, but there might be some other issues that you guys know about. And I, I'm just not aware right. of the answer, but you don't have to. You, you seem to, to be very familiar. You don't need to vote to close it. I think in the previous year they voted to close it. That's why I'm just wondering. That yeah. they, that I don't know why you we, couldn't do one. Well, we had said it, but when, when we open it, we explain to people when it's open and when it's closed. And that's okay. it. Yeah, yeah. You don't do need that. a vote to close it. Well, but so we don't need a formal vote except open it with a closing date specified. Right. Yeah. That would be a great now, thing for us when to we do. start changing it, though, then we have to open it and do this, and then we have to close it. 
or you can say, we're going to open it for the next five minutes, and now we're going to... Yeah, <laughs> that's the motion. Spoke, that's not the way you... We haven't opened it yet, or have we? No. no. So, so Monday we get to do it in one vote if we want, so we don't have to make... I like the yeah. idea of that's specifying fine. the interval, make a recommendation. My suggestion would be recognizing that we think we'd like to see a little more time that um, you f uh, form the proposed motion on the basis of the dates you would recommend. Sounds great. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Well, I just, Dick's concern, I believe, is that normally at the end we wind up jumping into the warrant and jumping out and jumping in and jumping out mm -hmm. because of changes. And he's trying to buy some time to eliminate that process. Are those changes typically new proposals coming through? Or is it changes to the, the, the existing warrants? That not data, not data within it. The, the order is open for items, yeah. okay, right. not the actual text within it. And so if the dollars change or something like that. However, if in fact we have a warrant article for a certain capital, mm -hmm. and we change our mind and say, hmm, this really is more important, we're going to pull that out of capital. Or, Conscom says, uh, FinCom says, the money ain't there, guys. Why do you have all that stuff in there? You've got to figure out which ones you're going to take out. Right. Uh, or, 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 or they say you got more. So there's this, this kind of and changing. We, we start jumbling on. the item numbers, and it gets really okay. messy. You're right. It's good. Yeah. Thank you. New version, new version. Right. right. Open version control. Control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think that's right. It gets a little crazy when we start getting into that. But I think that um, those of you who own the process, frankly, are more concerned with keeping things running as smoothly in terms of the process. And if if Closing it and then just going through the process of how we make changes later, or whatever, sure. is for this point the better way. It's not impossible. This is not a critical item. It's mm -hmm. just one worth considering. Okay. So we'll take your recommendation on that. Is we'll it this year? You started earlier than we did last year, and it wasn't chaotic last year, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't thing, bad last year. I yeah. agree. The other thing you just have to keep in mind, though, is that you know you talk about having the, the money. We don't have the money for it. We don't really know what we have the money for until we get school budgets, and those budgets aren't even scheduled to be coming until mid March. Yeah. Yeah. So you know there is there is that level of, of built-in scrambling. You know? There we go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Very good point. Um, oh, oh, sorry, Jim. No, I was going to say. Let's yeah. Last thing, I just wanted to mention. Um, you know, we went over. Uh, Rob went over the capital budget with you folks in the last working session. Um, I'm absolutely welcome any feedback off of that that you might have, um, because as we go through the warrant process, which is coming up pretty soon, um, that all plays what, what we want to consider mm -hmm. putting in, what can wait a year if it makes sense to. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any general feedback on that, it doesn't have to be today, and I know when our next few working sessions will cover budget and warrant, mm -hmm. but maybe there's we can carve out some time just to touch on that capital as well. One of the things we've talked about um, and kind of penciled in but didn't go any further on was uh, getting a joint meeting with FinCom and sort of penciled in for the 16th, I think, at some point. No. Um, so maybe Kevin and I penciled in. And it was kind of on the 22nd. 22nd, okay. It hasn't been verified with FinCom. So I think that is a time when looking at this all and, you know, capital conversations will happen. And that's when I would hope we would get a fairly direct assessment from them on how it looks to that point. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, the warrant is closed and you're kind of looking at what's there and so on. And then, um, But I think we do need to have that meeting, this sort of you know shouting across the river. Um, I, let's see less of that as time goes forward. Uh, we need to work collaboratively. And I think being in the same room is kind of key to doing that at mm -hmm. the start. Um, Deb, so are these dates finalized? Are these? That's what you all voted on last May. Okay. Which and doesn't mean something can't be changed or canceled or. Yeah, that's funny. I have different ones, but I'll have that, to. That's when we voted on back in May. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you do it for the fiscal year? So. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure because I'm doing schedules off of this, so okay. I will work around all these dates. But, but, but they don't changes. have the dates we just talked about, for example. Right. So Those are it's not on yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's my. It's, it's on me. Cool. That's not on anybody else. <laughs> what I will do is well, maybe we just make a copy of that. Yeah. Jeff sent it to me. I asked her to send me the most current because I, I didn't have one of the dates in that's my perfect. calendar that's great. I just want to make sure I was going to be When we get together, we can just make a physical February. copy of that. That's right. So you'll be back then is my Perfect. question. Okay. Okay. Good. Kevin, anything else? Um, thank you.
It's been an uh, exhilarating process, but it's been, a good, it's been a good one. It's been a very good process. I've, I've learned more in the last few weeks uh, than I ever imagined, but it's uh, it's all been very worth it. And um, I think we have a great budget that we're, that the teams put together. Um, like I said, we'll formally be submitting that to you folks. I'll have a package for you on Monday. Um, we will be sending it out to FinCom as well. Um, and it's, I think tomorrow. It's scheduled to receive electronically tonight, tomorrow. Okay, and can, can I just summarize though, a little bit about how good our budgets are? We do need to be a little careful. This does, and everything is relevant.